guest today is Yina Arenas. Yina, how are you? Hi, David. How's it going? It's going great. I'm, it's a pleasure to meet you. I love your smile. Thank you. You probably hear that a lot. <laughs> uh, what do you do? Well, I am uh, the program manager for Microsoft Graph. I lead a team of program managers uh, that bring together a whole bunch of different data sets across all of Microsoft products. And I've been doing this for about uh, seven years now, actually oh, since wow. Microsoft Graph was an idea. Oh, so you were like the first and uh, only PM on this, or the only head PM, for, I guess. For some time, initially, initially when it was an idea, it was uh, a handful of us that started like putting together um, demos, just like to set set the tone and the notion of like what we could do when we stopped shipping our organizational structure in terms of like the way that our products were released and our programmability model was created. Okay, now I think there's a lot of people that don't know what Microsoft Graph is. Can you explain mm -hmm. for us? Absolutely. So in its simplest form, Microsoft Graph is all of the fabric of data that we have for our customers. So if you take a customer, we always use Contoso or Fabricam as the example. So if you take Contoso as an example, and all of the like thousands of hundreds of users that Contoso as an organization will have, and the data that they're creating on a daily basis because they're using our products. So like messages, calendar information, meetings, uh, conversations in Teams, files in SharePoint or OneDrive, the tasks in Planner, the files that they have in Excel, Word, PowerPoint, the security alerts, the devices that they have in Intune, like their Windows uh, machines, like everything, all of that data is there in the Microsoft Graph. It is exposed to developers as an API. It's a simple REST-based HTTP API that you can just query and get information and also obviously do all of the crop processes, right? And so it's that concept of like the fabric of data for our customers. And because we have all of that data together, we can uh, then take that data and the signals that are based on the activity of that the users have, like whether it is like when you send an email, how much time you spend reading an, an email, how much time you spend authoring a file, or like the people that you collaborate with to co-author those files, and then take all of that information and generate insights. So those insights are also part of Microsoft Graph, and it will tell you, for example, people-to-people -people relationships, for example, the people that you work with, uh, like if I will go and query Microsoft Graph today for the people that I work with, that it will bring me uh, persons that I, my first common manager is Satya Nadella. So it's like it, it takes all of that based on the relationships that, that we have because we collaborate together, because we uh, have communications or co-author documents and all of that. Um, so that's the one relationship that we have, that people-to-people -people, uh, relationships and insights that are generated based on the activities that we have. We have also people-to-document relations, people-to-content relationships. So, for example, at Build, we announced uh, a project Cortex, which is one of our projects that allows us to create uh, those the taxonomy of projects based on the, the content and the knowledge that is being generated on the services. So many times we have that we are working on projects and you know, people don't actually go and like create the taxonomies or like put the documents where they need to be or like, you know, you don't know who knows what in the organization. So the, all of the information that we have in Microsoft Graph allows us to generate that automatically. So and allows us to generate the terms, allows us to generate like the relationship between the people that are working together on a particular project. And that is all part of Microsoft Graph. So like the fixed data and the data that we generate based on the activity and the insights that we have. That is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds it's like it's pretty much as if I'm building an application, then I have the data that's like core to that application. You know, I, maybe I'm building an accounting system. So I have customers and accounts receivable, accounts billable. And then I have stuff that's common to any application just because I'm a part of an organization. And that's where Graph comes in, right? It's it's those messages, those documents I'm sharing, those uh, I don't, printers I'm connected to. Yes, the users in the organization. The users, groups, how, right? And, like, and, and, and how I'm connected to them. Yeah, it's all around that user concept, right? Like, who are you as a user? Who are the people that you collaborate with? The groups that you belong to? All of the content that is around the user information. That's basically uh, the the gists of what Microsoft Graph is. Tell me a little bit about as a developer, how do I uh, interact with this? Is it you said it's an API, right? Yep, it's an API. So basically, it is super simple. 
any type of device that is capable of making an HTTP request can interact with the graph. Obviously, all of the information behind Microsoft Graph has to be authenticated and authorized for in order to, to get that access, right? Like, so we use standard OAuth 2.0 flow. Azure Active Directory is our authorization uh, authentication provider. And uh, there's a common flow that allows users to go and sign in into the directory. And then a consent UI is presented. For example, you want to give application full access to John's calendar, right? Like, so John will come in and consent. And then after that, uh, the application will get an access token and present that access token to the graph. And then uh, the graph authorizes that access. and that's a basic HTTP request that says get slash me slash calendars or like actually slash me slash event. Okay. And uh, and then you can get up back that information, which is represented in simple JSON. But so in order to, so it's a two step process. I, I as the, the manager of either my user account, my emails, whatever, I have to uh, somehow give permission mm -hmm. for people to see it. Absolutely. And then I, as an application developer, if I want to see that, then I have to write code that'll send an HTTP request to access that information. Is that yes. right? Yes, exactly. And if you prefer to like, you know, write your code in different languages, like for example, if you're a .NET developer or Java, or like if you prefer JavaScript, then we have libraries that hmm. like work on top of the API and then just give you all of that syntactic uh, helper classes and all of that that you will like, that you will expect from a client library. And we have them in a variety of languages. We have them in .NET, in Java, in JavaScript, in Ob um, Objective C, in PHP, in Python, and a few others. That sounds exciting to me because uh, HTTP is kind of hard sometimes. It's kind of verbose too. It's a yes, lot of extra code. It is. It is. <laughs> It is, uh, but under the hood, there's you're saying those those libra yeah, those libraries are just making a REST call under the hood. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. they are. And they're also not just making a REST call. They also have a set of cross-cutting capabilities, like, for example, managing pagination or, um, like, you know, retry logic. Uh, like when sometimes when the service throttles request and being able to do that exponential back off and the retry. So we build those type of things into the SDKs so that nice. you don't have to, like, uh, like rebuild them again. Very nice. Now, I your name came to my attention because I saw you on one of the keynotes for the the recent Microsoft Build yeah. conference, which is online now. <laughs> and um, you're talking a little about some of the new things. I know you already mentioned Project Cortex. Are there mm -hmm. other thing new things that are part of Graph? Yes, absolutely. I mean, like Microsoft Graph is composed for over fifty different teams that like feed their APIs and expose their APIs into Microsoft Graph. So, like, there's always new things. We tend to like bundle them together at conferences, whether it is build or ignite, and then just like make big, make big splashes at those times. But in reality, we're constantly taking new things to market, whether it is in preview to like let our developers uh, give us feedback of the things that are there. So like we have an, an endpoint on the API slash beta, which has, has all of the different things that we have in preview. And then we have a V1 version, which is our production ready uh, endpoint. So we get things like either introducing to Perio or graduating into V1 and a whole bunch of different capabilities coming from different places. So uh, things that we announced at Build 2020 include we have uh, new capabilities in SharePoint to enumerate sites. We have new capabilities with our search APIs. We have new capabilities with a profile API that actually we announced back at uh, Ignite. Uh, we have new capabilities coming actually from all of the different services that participate into Microsoft Graph. Let me pick a couple. So um, I think that from a services perspective, like I mentioned Cortex, that we also have another service which is called Microsoft Graph Connectors. Microsoft Graph Connectors is the ability to index data that is external to Microsoft Graph uh, or external to like you know uh, Microsoft 365 into Microsoft Graph so that it can participate in common experiences, for example, Microsoft Search. So like let's imagine that you have a line of business system uh, that has your HR data or that it has like your um, inventory in on premises or or on some other cloud. And then you want to participate. You want to enable the users when they are going into Office.com or SharePoint.com or even in Windows. When they just go into the search bar, they just you want them then to be able to not only access the information that they have uh, on SharePoint or when it comes to documents, but also at accessing information that is in that external system. So you can use Microsoft Graph connectors, index that data into Microsoft Graph, and then your content will start showing up as uh, 
you know, side by side to all of the other content that is part of Microsoft 365. So that's, I think, a huge uh, value proposition to just get in that context and provide that similar uh, set of experiences, uh, seamless type of experiences in the service. So we announced that at Ignite, we did a refresh uh, at here at Build. Um, and those are like, that's a, an incredible capability that we have that, um, you know, just we get lots of customer really positive feedback around that in addition to some of the other things that i mentioned nice uh, you keep mentioning uh, microsoft 365 that's a, is this uh is this a part of microsoft 365 or is it integration with uh, what's what's the correct way to think about this so microsoft 365 is a term that has evolved over the last couple of years yeah. initially like quite honest, it was a marketing team, um, a marketing term, like kind of bundling together what we have with Office 365, with Windows and with enterprise mobility and security and acknowledging that like we have the same customers buying the three uh, separate products or, like, or services and then just putting them all together into a single uh, into a single bundle. Mm. Now, over the years, it actually has evolved to be a product uh, end to end. Like where, like now, experiences that are being built into build into Windows are more aware of the things that are were previously considered just Office 365 notions. So, like when you go and type into your Windows bar, like the search bar, and you type for a name of a document, it's actually going to bring you documents that you were working on that are stored in SharePoint or your OneDrive, right? Like it's connecting those experiences across. Uh, same thing with like the, your devices when you talk about Intune and being able to manage those devices and like, you know, uh, the experiences that, that we have today, Outlook or OneDrive or SharePoint, all of those mobile apps being able to like respect all of those policies that you set up on the, on the mobile devices on Intune. So now it's coming together as a single product and and from a from an extensibility perspective, Microsoft Graph is the gateway to Microsoft 365. So all of that data that you find on that now single product, Intune is part of Microsoft Graph, SharePoint is part of Microsoft Graph, Exchange is part of Microsoft Graph, Azure Active Directory, Planner, OneNote, like Windows services, like all of those services are or have data in the graph. So like when you you can think about it as as the Microsoft Graph being the gateway to access all of the Microsoft 365 data. Uh, that makes sense. So it's sort of uh, the that's the graph is sort of the glue that holds them all together. And yes. uh, I uh, under the hood, if I, for example, if I type in my search engine, um, or if I type in a Windows search and it goes out automatically and looks in my OneDrive, my SharePoint, is under the hood. Is it using Graph to do that? Yep, indeed, it's using. Uh, it's actually the the there is a lot of work that has gone into search. So uh, previously we had like silos of content in search. Right. So you had SharePoint search and the search in your mailbox and the search in Windows. Now Microsoft a couple of years back announced Microsoft Search, which is, which is a unified way to get access to search across all of the different set of services. And then Microsoft Search is exposed through Microsoft Graph as well. So we have that endpoint that um, enables you to either, like as I was saying, index data or just look through the normal search queries. Very cool. Do I need to be part of an enterprise in order to do this? If I just have my home PC and I'm connected to the internet and that's it, do I still, is, is Microsoft Graph still relevant to me? Yeah, well, it is relevant to you if you have, of course, if you have an enterprise account, whether it's traditionally known as an Office 365 organization or Microsoft 365 now because it's been rebranded. So if you are a part of an enterprise that it has Microsoft 365 as a service, then you have all of the data in Microsoft Graph available there for your organization. And one thing important thing to, to clarify is that like the we talk about globally about the Microsoft Graph, but it's actually like a lot of little graphs that are around a on a an user or around an organization. So if like you're a customer for Microsoft 365 Enterprise, and then so you, your entire organization, we had the example of Contoso, will have uh, you know their version, their notion of the graph. Now, if you're a user and you're uh, you have like a at outlook.com account or a live.com account or like a hotmail.com account, right? Like then there is a ton of content that there is available for you as part of Microsoft Graph as well. In this case, it will be all around your uh, Microsoft account. Like that will be your messages, your mail, your calendar, your contacts, your content in OneDrive, like all of that information uh, is, bar is part of Microsoft Graph uh, on the consumer side. Very cool. 
Um, is it? Is there anything we haven't talked about that you think we should? Um, well, where should developers get started? So I, I always yes. have this. Um, there's question. one thing that you need to learn, which is like just remember graph.microsoft.com. If you type that in your browser, it will take you to our developer portal where you're able to get started in a you know, whether it's you, what's your language of your choice. You'll find a, a whether it's a quick start, it will get you there in three minutes or a tutorial. We have the so self-paced tutorials that take about 30 minutes to complete. Oh, and then okay. we also have uh, our Graph Explorer, which is like our most beloved tool that developers can just go there and start playing with the API. You don't need anything. Like it has a demo account already tied into it, so you can start making the requests, see all of the samples that we have in there. And then if you want to just like play uh, or engage with your own data, you can sign in and then like see that, uh, play with that information. What does the Graph Explorer do? Graph Explorer allows you to see the requests in and out that you can get from Microsoft Graph. So like if you go to Graph Explorer, you can go with graph.microsoft.com and then click on Graph Explorer, or you can just do aka.ms slash GE. That will also take you to Graph Explorer. And this is basically a tool that uh, will make the requests to the API and will show you back the responses of what you'll get by making that HTTP request. It will also show you what are the permissions that are required for a given API. Remember that we said like, you know, every single API that you make to the graph has to be authenticated and authorized, and that re that is represented by that access token. So it will say like, for example, for the mail API, you'll need at least mail.read permissions in order to make a get request to the mail API or for you know, like if you wanted to get user profile information, you could do it in a, there's a different set of permission scopes that are available. So for example, user.read.basic will give you basic profile information and can be consented by user. But uh, there are other set of permission scopes, like for example, user.read.all that gives you all of the information about the users in the organization. And that actually requires an administrator to consent because it contains a lot of sensitive information that we wouldn't want just a normal user to be given away. And that's my my two year old. <laughs> oh, OK, that's a good signal. We should probably wrap this up right now. And um, uh, I'm, I'm looking at graph.microsoft.com right now. There's a lot of information here. Hey, guys. Yeah. And then so um, graph.microsoft.com. Yes, that's the place where you can get all of the information. Developers can get all of the information to get started with Microsoft Graph. And um, Graph Explorer is the place where you can play with all of that information. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. All righty, David. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, friends, for joining me today on the Technology and Friends show. And I hope that you have a great rest of the day and that you can get started building applications with Microsoft Graph. See you all next time.